Okay, so this is going to be a short video uh, to talk about uh, an extension of the conjugate gradient method uh, called the fletcher reeves method. So you remember uh, in conjugate gradients there was this nice piece of mathematics, a really beautiful piece of mathematics that said uh, in quadratic functions we could get to the minimizer and exactly to the minimizer uh, in far fewer steps than with using something like uh, the steepest descent method. Um, you know, in, um, in 2D, uh, using the conjugate gradient method, we could arrive at the exact minimizer after two steps, uh, and in n dimensions, uh, the conjugate gradient method converges in at most n steps. Um, so that was a really nice piece of mathematics, um, but it had a really important limitation, which was that uh, it was solving this problem here, which is to find the minimizer of a quadratic function, right? And if you think about it, you know, don't get me wrong, like quadratic functions are, are pretty ubiquitous uh, in machine learning and are a really important um, class of functions to talk about when doing optimization, but they're far from the entire world uh, of problems that you might want to solve uh, using optimization. So, you know, this restriction to quadratic functions here is actually pretty limited, and, and really what we would like is we'd like something conjugate gradient like, uh, something similar to the conjugate gradient method. Uh, but which works on an arbitrary function, right? We, uh, so really what we want to do is we want to be able to solve this problem uh, for a general f uh, using some ideas that are uh, sort of like the um, conjugate gradient method. And so the trick there, right, so the trick uh, for solving this problem is, as it always is uh, in, in, in this sort of topic, is to use Taylor series. Right, so you know, to approximate an arbitrary function f, well, I mean, if you use a Taylor series expansion and stop after two terms, you can pretty well approximate that function by a quadratic. You can do a pretty good job, as we do again and again and again, by using the second order Taylor series expansion, which is quadratic. Right, so as long as I identify this matrix A here uh, with the Hessian uh, evaluated at um, xk, at the kth iterate, uh, and as long as I um, identify this vector ch uh, g with the gradient, you know, the gradient of f evaluated at xk, uh, then you know, you've, you've got a quadratic approximation to an ar arbitrary function f, right? Using, just using the Taylor series, and away you go. Right? You could use your conjugate gradient method on that quadratic Taylor series approximation, um, and you're good to go. Right? So you, you could just do that, and that would be a perfectly good optimization scheme that uses the conjugate gradient method. So there's one slight issue here, uh, one thing which is a bit of a concern, which is that that matrix, that A, uh, that we have to get uh, in our quadratic approximation to my arbitrary function F, you know, that's the Hessian, uh, and I need to reevaluate it at every iterate, right? So the, the place that I'm evaluating the Hessian at has to be XK to make the Taylor series expansion work here um, as a quadratic. Right, I need to evaluate the Hessian here uh, at every step of my optimization, right? So at xk, and that's an expensive uh, thing to do. So um, uh, the question here becomes: Is there a way uh, that I can uh, use my conjugate gradient method, but somehow get around having to evaluate the Hessian, which is this, um, you know, computationally can be this computationally expensive thing to do without having to reevaluate that at every single step. Uh, and the answer is, uh, is yes, there is. It is possible to do that. And if you go back through uh, the theory of how we derive the conjugate gradient method, um, you'll see something nice, which is that any time I use the Hessian, um, any time I ended up using the Hessian in conjugate gradients, and uh, the conjugate gradient method, it always appeared multiplied by my new search direction, uh, UK. So I always ended up using uh, the Hessian, you know, this A times UK um, at every step. So I ended up using a vector every time rather than needing to explicitly calculate the Hessian itself. And if you chase that through and do some algebra, um, you, can, you can discover that you can actually write uh, the betas in your conjugate gradient method, and so to remind you, the betas in the conjugate gradient, uh, that's, the, um, uh, that's the, uh, the, the distance that you step, or it's, it's the amount of update uh, that you make to your new search direction. Uh, so every time you search in a new direction using a conjugate gradient method, this beta k um, appears. And you know, in, in the conjugate gradients, we wrote this down using my matrix A, 
Um, but it turns out um, that you can actually write those B, uh, B to Ks just in terms of the gradient of F, not needing the Hessian uh, entirely itself. So there's, an, there's actually uh, like simplified methods that you can use uh, for, for writing down these B to Ks when you have this Taylor series um, expansion. So, you know, and, and, and basically choosing those B to Ks um, to be the gradient of F, uh, gradient of F evaluated xk plus one squared divided by the gradient of F of xk all squared. Um, uh, uh, that's called the Fletcher Reeves formula. You know, it's not the only way. Um, it's not the only piece of algebra that you can do here to come up with a, a scheme that works on uh, on, on Taylor series uh, expansions. There's also this Polak. Rubier formula. There's other formulas that you could use here, but you know this Fletcher's formula is quite a nice um, version of this. This is a theorem. Um, it's something that we could prove. Um, the proof is in the notes. I actually won't prove. Um, I won't actually won't prove this because it sort of relies on. Um, if you think back to room, back to my um, uh, derivation of uh, conjugate gradient method and why it um, converges in n steps. Uh, the proof of this result here uh, on the slide relies on one of those intermediate lemmas that I didn't prove for conjugate gradient method. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I won't go back and uh, reprove those things here. But, you know, you can take a look at the, uh, at the, form, at the uh, proof in the notes. It's pretty straightforward. And the important point uh, is that you can get away um, uh, in this Taylor series expansion idea uh, without having to uh, calculate the Hessian every step. So here's what this uh, method looks like as an algorithm. Um, so I, again, I won't talk through the, uh, the full details of this because this algorithm, if you go back and compare it with conjugate gradients, it's very, very similar uh, to the conjugate gradient method. There's kind of two major places um, where it differs. Um, and that's why, I mean, firstly, you know, we have um, gradients F rather than the gradient uh, of a quadratic, which is a much simpler thing. Uh, and basically, you know, the bits that have changed in this are all the bits that use the Hessian, right? All the bits that used uh, the matrix A. So, you know, the matrix A appeared in conjugate gradients when calculating these betas, you know, the update to my search direction. Um, so they now appear just using the uh, fletcher Reeves uh, expression from the last slide, right? So not using the uh, A, so not using the, the Hessian anywhere. Um, there's also this funny thing where, uh, for quadratics, I had a precise, um, I had a, pr a precise way of calculating lambda, which also involved a. Um, now, to get around having to calculate the Hessian each step, I'm just going to do a line search to figure out how far, um, how long a step I should take uh, in each uh, direction. So this is the spot where you, the, the the point in uh, uh, in the algorithm where you find the minimum searching along the direction UK. Um, so instead of uh, calculating that exactly, uh, which we need, need the Hessian to do here, uh, we'll now do a line search. So you could do golden section search or something, dichotomous search, whatever you want for this one dimensional search here. Um, that introduces another slight difficulty. Um, you see there's this funny looking uh, K mod N being less than uh, uh, N minus one step. Uh, that comes about, so if you take uh, N steps here, uh, in this new Fletcher Reeves method, you don't necessarily end up at the minimizer, uh, and the reason for that is because you're not exactly calculating anything anymore. You'll find that you're approximately uh, finding the uh, the minimum along each step that you take. Um, you don't, so you don't necessarily converge exactly to the minimizer within n steps anymore. And so, if that happens, if you haven't converged close enough to the um, uh, to the solution after n steps. This if statement here is a fancy way of saying, like, if you haven't converged, then every n steps restart uh, the algorithm. So do take a steepest descent step um, and then start this process again. So you may take longer than n steps uh, to converge to the solution, um, but that makes sense because we're not dealing with quadratics anymore, right? We don't have, we don't exactly have those nice uh, properties that we had um, about quadratics. Um, but you know, this is, is we're still using the conjugate gradient. Um, sort of ideas, uh, and this is a method that works pretty well, um, uh, but it doesn't exactly converge. So bec and that's because it, it works on a more general class of uh, cost functions. So that's the fletcher reeves method. That's uh, approximately all that I want to say about it, actually. So just a few comments uh, on this. Um, it's 
complicated to show this. It's not worth our time doing the um, uh, uh, doing proof. Um, but the convergence, you can take a, um, uh, as, uh, assume that the um, uh, the convergence of the fletcher reeve method is approximately the same as Newton's uh, Newton's method, which is you know pr a pretty fast convergence rate. So we don't actually lose an awful lot um, uh, by going from quadratics to uh, uh, to general functions. Um, yeah, some other things. So you know, if f is non-convex, right? So we've spent a lot of time talking about how um, convex functions are nice, and we can prove things about them. It turns out that for non-convex functions, fletcher reeve still works. Uh, it tends to converge to a stationary point, so a point where uh, the gradient of f is equal to zero. Um, yeah, which is still um, you know, about as good as you can expect. Uh, yeah, if f is non-quadratic, yeah, we often need to re restart um, in, uh, in uh, you know, every step, n steps or um, or less. And so that's you know, that's uh, this uh, this if else statement here um, is this uh, allowing us to restart um, every n steps or less. Um, yeah, and there are also, um, uh, there are similar variants. As I said before, you know, Fletcher Reeves is not the only way to do this um, uh, approximation uh, of the conjugate gradient method to non-quadratic uh, cost functions. Uh, there's also things like the Broyden, uh, Broyden Fletcher Goldfarb Shano uh, BFGS method. This is actually, you know, I put, the, um, put this up on the slide because this is actually very, very ubiquitous. So, you know, when you're looking at uh, different optimization methods uh, out there in the world, when you look in um, you know, an optimization package at the sorts of uh, uh, optimization schemes that are used, or if you find in papers, you will see people using this BFGS uh, method. And so keep in mind, uh, that what that means, it's essentially another variant uh, of this Fletcher and Reeves method. So it's a conjugate gradient like method, um, but just applied to general functions rather than being restricted to quadratics. Uh, so yeah, Fletcher is a nice method. Uh, yeah, and that's about uh, all I want to say about it.